Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel is Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna go over Twitter. I posted a bunch of different ratios as well, so we can go over some ratios uh, that I posted on Twitter and we'll get the uh, commodity, I guess, information from this area since I'm posting on it. If you wanna follow me on Twitter, uh, you can follow me at finding underscore finance and you can follow me and what I post, but uh, we'll go over it together. <clears throat> here we go. Let me make it a little bit bigger here. Uh, there's my, if you want to follow me at finding underscore finance, you can add me. So uh, I posted this long-term investing. <clears throat> Successful investing takes time, discipline, and patience. No matter how great the talent or effort, some things just take time. You can't produce a baby in one month by getting nine women pregnant. And I know some people probably would like to try that, but... Uh, buy a stock the way you would buy a house. Understand and like it such that you'd be content to own it in the absence of any market. If you aren't willing to own a stock for 10 years, don't even think about owning it for 10 minutes. Time is the friend of the wonderful company, the enemy of the mediocre company. I never attempt to make money on the stock market. I buy the assumption that they could close the market the next day and not reopen it for five years. So those are some tips from Warren Buffett and kind of his uh, opinions on long-term investing. I am a long-term investor. I invest for you know five to 10 years, uh, something on the lines of that. And I think we have a good setup in energy. Uh, energy isn't going to be solved overnight. So I think it's going to take some time and some investment uh, to solve all of our <laughs> energy crisis problems. Uh, here's uranium. I said uranium looking good against, uh, well, everything. Uh, outperformance is ahead of us. The exact timing is anyone's guess, but uranium is aligning for the move, the move higher. Um, if you look at the ratio charts, this is uranium to silver. Uh, it's already broken kind of out of its resistance area and it's starting to move higher. It looks really good. Uh, if you look at uranium priced against the S&P 500, I think we're going to see a move uh, on upward. The momentum is starting to shift from a sideways momentum to an upward momentum. Uh, we've got uranium against gold. Uh, it's been tracking sideways ever since 2012-ish. And here we are uh, starting to make our way higher. And then uranium against copper. I think, I think uranium is going to beat probably every single uh, other sector in the world at some point. Right now, we're still very early in it, uh, but I think it'll, it'll see an outperformance against all other assets, which makes uranium one of the best um, investment opportunities in the market. I also think platinum is in that same situation. So here's uh, gold is still outperforming silver. Fears in the market still persist. I think we have a little more time before the boom comes in the inflationary metals. Patience. And gold to silver ratio, we are still kind of doing this retest of the breakout. So we had a long disinflationary period where uh, gold had outperformed silver. That's why the ratio increased. We had a large breakout to the downside and a capitulation bottom for silver. So we capitulated. There's the bottom in silver. We've broken out of this uptrend line. That's check number one, breaking the uptrend. We, we broke out. We're doing a retest of that breakout move somewhere in this vicinity. Are we there yet? I don't know. Maybe it's got one little last leg higher. And then I think silver is going to outperform from that point on. Uh, I also think that the DXY is going to, get, to go lower against other currencies. Why do I think that? Well, Europe and other countries are basically going through a massive energy crisis. I think that energy crisis will probably peak in 2022 or 2023. Uh, this winter, I think, will be the worst. I think it will gradually get better. And as the inflation and the pricing moves up to a very high level, I think the inflation with these base, we'll call it base effects of the, these higher prices. I think they'll actually go into a disinflation at some point, probably 2023, 2024. That's my guess. 
But I think in order for them to get into disinflation, I think they're going to transfer some of that inflation to America. I think we are going to get higher oil prices. We are going to get higher natural gas prices. And I think that there's going to be a shift in the DXY where we get that inflation. They got it first, we get it second, and it's going to transfer to us. Remember, inflation is a relative term to where you are today. So if our prices go up in relationship to the prices that were last year against last year, we have inflation. But over in Europe, they have such high electricity, natural gas, oil prices. Everything is so high over there. I think it will slow down at some point. I don't think it will continually go up forever like that. If it does, they've got some serious problems and a hyperinflation on their hands. So I do think that this will turn and go lower. Uh, I also have platinum to gold ratio. Uh, platinum broke out to the upside of this downtrend line, and we're just kind of sitting on top of it. That's usually where I like to buy, so I just load into it. But that's that's that. And when silver and platinum outperform gold, it means that we're in, in an inflationary period. Usually, commodities outperform when, when platinum outperforms gold. And when silver outperforms gold, and it also it also means that stocks usually underperform during that same time frame. So we'll see an inflationary period, and and we've broken out to the upside for that to happen. We just haven't taken off yet. We haven't taken off. Looking at uh, commodities, so this is the commodity to S and P five hundred ratio. I said commodity is still working itself higher against the S&P 500. Uh, this is a bigger picture view. We've broken the long-term downtrend in the blue here. We're heading on higher. That's wave one. We've pulled on back. Wave two is the pullback. And then I think wave three is coming. We've broken out of this descending wedge to the upside. If we zoom in on this, it looks like this. We've had this nice little breakout to the upside and it's moving higher. Looks fantastic for commodities. Now, I understand that this is a ratio. Uh, what we are looking for is an outperformance of commodities in relationship to the S&P 500. Uh, when the S&P 500 goes down, commodities should go down less, generally speaking. Or we see an outright, complete um, delinkage of the system. Uh, and that delinkage of the system means that commodities could go up and the S&P 500 could go down at the same time. And that's what we're looking for in uranium and all these other energy metals. Energy, I should say, energy metals and energy in itself, fossil fuels. Uh, energy, I think, will go up, and I think that the majority of other stocks uh, could go down. And hopefully we can de-link uh, energy from the overall stock market. And I, I think that's working its way out. It's just going to take some time, and it's going to be ultra volatile uh, as we delink and decouple from the markets. But that looks really good. Uh, it says, I'm far from an expert, but something Rick Roll said sticks with me. In the 70s, people knew about inflation, but it wasn't until several years when they actually felt its bite that they took action. Being patient isn't fun, but I don't see many alternatives at this point. I actually agree with that. It just takes some time. And here's something. When I was talking about the decoupling up here, um, this is what I'm talking about, the decoupling. The S&P 500 was down 4.34% this past week. But the uranium stocks were up double digits, 15%, 19%, 18 16 19 and so forth. Is this the sign of decoupling? It is. It is. And it just takes time. You have to be patient. The money is going to flow around. And I think what's really going to be a big tailwind behind us is when we get that DXY to go lower. I still think it's a little ways out. Uh, I'm still waiting for that, that DXY to turn over. Um, the euro and, and the Japanese yen and all these different currencies, they, they just, it's going to take some time because their input costs are just, their energy costs are going up dramatically faster than ours in, in America. But they will slow down, and I think America's energy costs will go up 
uh, at a different rate or cycle than theirs. And they're going to transfer their inflation to us as we become more interconnected with the world markets through liquefied natural, natural gas terminals. Uh, here's the Texas. So Texas bans 10 banks and 348 investment funds over fossil fuel policies. Bullish Texas and oil companies is the tide turning on ESG, still not seeing fund flows into oil and gas equities for now. We have a very large, um, I'd say, valuation difference in relationship to history in oil and gas companies right now. They are vastly under-owned. Uh, and I think what's going to happen is the money will have to rotate over. It will chase the performance uh, of oil and gas equities. And I don't think that we're ready to move away from oil and gas at this time. I think it's going to take at least another couple of decades. I said a couple of decades, not years, decades. Uh, so I, I just don't think we're ready yet. And this underinvestment in oil and gas is going to basically provide us with a ridiculous setup for investment in oil and gas equities and service companies because I'll just say we premature prematurely moved to a technology that isn't ready yet that we can't implement fast enough and that uh, it isn't reliable enough for us to to basically use yet so that's the opportunity and I think it will be around for at least a decade. The underinvestment has really kind of pushed this stuff higher. Um, Neil Kashikari, Minneapolis Fed president, November 2021. Fed shouldn't re overact to temporary inflation. Today, inflation is raging inferno. <laughs> um, here's one uh, talking about Germany, which is heading toward an electricity crisis. The, one year ahead, power prices skyrocketed to almost a thousand per megawatt hour. The electricity price has risen by 720% year to date. Such increase will bankrupt many energy intensive firms. So here's what the, the chart looks like. It is definitely going vertical. Uh, this, in my opinion, isn't sustaining. It will, it will turn back around. It's going to absolutely destroy any company that is in Germany. So what I'm looking at, since Europe is having these massive problems with their, <laughs> with their energy uh, sources here, I'm looking at places where there's low energy input costs that have high energy consumers, like smelting companies. There's going to be opportunities uh, when this crash kind of resides where we have a large disparity between energy input costs in America versus Europe. Europe is going to have to shut down all of their energy intensive firms. Ours are going to prosper like no other because they will be the last ones standing. So high energy intensive, maybe smelting companies that are located in low energy cost areas could be some crazy investment opportunities in the world. And I'm I'm doing that. I am exploiting those opportunities and sharing them on the website in the description link below of what I think some of those best opportunities are for the platinum members on the website. Uh here's uranium it says money flows into the sector just seems so inevitable. Uh, and it says Elon Musk Countries should be increasing nuclear power generation. It is insane from a national security standpoint and bad for the environment to shut them down. I totally agree. Uh, here's uranium. So we talk about this big bullish engulfing. Uh, what this is right here is that bullish engulfing candlestick. So this is what we see in Camco. Uh, we call it our leader. This is on a weekly basis. So the, each stick candlestick is a weekly candlestick. It is a lower opening price and a much higher closing price, it's engulfing everything before it. What that means is that we will most likely, on a statistical probability, move higher against uh, or move higher over the coming weeks and months. It is a bottoming formation. So, this pullback here is a bottoming formation over the past couple of weeks. 
turned around, and I think we'll be heading higher. Uh, the bullish engulfing, this is also on the Sprout Physical Uranium Trust. And this is the bullish engulfing setup, where the low and the high encapsulates and engulfs the, the entire candlestick before it, uh, which is a reversal candlestick pattern. Uh, Bitcoin has so far proven it's a tech play tracking the NASDAQ. Crypto fans assume it will decouple from stocks. It might do that. But if not, guess where I think Bitcoin will go? Assumptions are dangerous. Evidence is everything. And it's probably going to head lower. Uh, this is the NASDAQ. And the NASDAQ is, it, I also agree, uh, is going to head lower. Same with the S&P 500. And, the, and Bitcoin is tracking and following the NASDAQ. Uh, Patrick Karam, great 15-minute rundown on ratios for lowering acquisition costs. Uh, this is another really cool chart that I like that Scott has posted. This is the case for much higher uranium. He's got 1,650. Uh, I think we're going to meet somewhere lower than that. Um, but it's it's this is what the setup is. Uh, this is the Dow Jones Industrial Average in relationship to oil. And we've we've noticed that you know oil and uranium basically trade in tandem and they basically hit the same price roughly speaking in history and we've had a couple of major energy crisis and inflationary movements in history uh, we've had one in the 1910s and 20s so we had one large um we'll call it outperformance of oil in relationship to the dow jones industrial average that hit a ratio of 1 to 20. One Dow Jones could buy 20 barrels of oil. Uh, it started at 1 to 160. I think that the Dow Jones Industrial Average will lose, will, will lose value in relationship to dollars, and I think the oil price will go up in dollars. I think it will be um, that divergence which will compress the ratio that much. We also saw a mini cycle. Uh, in here, in the 1930s, a mini cycle that came down to the 1 to 80 level from a 1 to 258 level. We saw another major cycle from the late 60s all the way till 1980. Another energy crisis, peak production in 1970, high inflationary type movement. And remember, uranium peaked at the same price that oil peaked at. We had a mini cycle. Uh, from 520 was the ratio all the way down uh, to 80. That mini cycle uh, hit uh, 80, and we had another 140 peak uranium, 147 peak oil, basically a one to one ratio. And what's coming is what we think is a, uh, Scott and I, a major super cycle, much like this super cycle here and this one in the 70s. We have a major energy crisis around the world. We've got a demographic coming into home buying years. So it's going to be highly inflationary. And on top of it, we've got energy constraints in the system. And we're, we're falling off a cliff, much like we fell off a cliff here in that super cycle. In this super cycle, we fell off a cliff. And we're falling off a cliff again in this super cycle. We didn't have that cliff drop before in these mini cycles. So... The way this thing is falling is very similar to a commodity super cycle, not a mini cycle. And we're probably going to come down. We'll do some sort of retest move uh, under 80. And then I think we're going to compress all the way down to 1 to 20 ratio. Now, he's got 1,650 per barrel. Uh, it's probably going to be less than that is my guess. And the reason is, is that I think that the Dow Jones Industrial Average will probably get just shellacked, I'll call it. It's going to get it's going to get it, it's going to sell off, I think, quite a bit. And I think oil and uranium are going to go up quite a bit and they're going to meet at a one to 20 ratio. Uh, and that could be um, a time where you start to look to exit is somewhere around a one to 30 or less ratio. But it's going to take some time. It's not going to be, you know, the quickest thing ever. <laughs> Patience. Uh, this cycle. Uh, maybe it lasted, you know, 10 years or so. This one as well, about, you know, 10 years plus. Uh, so eight to 10 years. If we started this cycle uh, in 2020, I would guess 2028, 2030 would be the end of the cycle. So that's kind of the time frame. 
that's the, we'll call it the explosiveness that oil and uranium could have. And remember, oil is, I'm just going to say roughly 90 to to $100 a barrel. Uh, uranium is still in the 40, you know, high upper 40s right now, 48, 47, 49, depending on where it's trading. So I do think that uranium probably has a little bit more fuel in the tank than oil does. Uh, I also think that natural gas could do some absolutely crazy things. And the opportunity is, is in energy, I think, because that's where the, the constraints and restraints are. So that's the, the kind of the super cycle there. And that's where I'll end it because that's where uh, I think we've got a lot of uh, value there. So um, that's what I've got for today. Hopefully it you know, helps you guys visualize kind of where we are in the cycle. I think we're super early and we're going to see a lot of volatility here with uh, economies coming under pressure with high energy prices, uh, energy prices that have moved up at ridiculous speeds. And I, I think we're going to have we're going to have a recession, guys. There's there's no way about this. Uh, Europe is going to go through some crazy times here. Uh, I think it's going to transfer to America and we could see some pretty big volatility in the markets, in energy prices and commodities and in stocks. So I think we're just getting heated up. Uh, we, you know, maybe it's prudent to own or to have a lot more higher allocation to cash because these, these prices are moving vertical. It's, it's going to flatten things. It has to. It is going to destroy demand until demand meets supply. And there's such little supply right now that it's gonna you're gonna it's gonna be inevitable to to go through a recession, I think, all throughout the world. So that's what we got. Um, that's where my head's at, at least. If you guys like the content, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel, uh, subscribe to the website below, platinum membership in the description link below. Uh, if you guys have questions, uh, we have plat um We've got question and answer sessions that we do on a weekly basis, either Saturday or Sunday, and you can attend those or you can see the video recordings that we have uh, of previous ones and you can see kind of where I'm looking, what my favorite companies are and whatnot. All right, guys, we'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.